Hello, my name is Charles Severance, and uh, welcome to my little mini lecture on com computing homophily. So, homophily, the definition of homophily that I've taken from Wikipedia, is the tendency for people to like the same thing, whether it be s people who like living in snow, or people who like living at the beach, or people who like a particular football team, or um, vegetarians. It, and it's, it's basically sort of dimensions of sameness. And we can look at graphs and the homophily is a way to sort of say, are, 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 are there like two categories of people in this graph? And so, so when we take a look at a graph, and so here's a little a graph of people who know each other. So each of the nodes is a person and each of the little arrows is sort of a a friendship or an acquaintance graph, uh, acquaint the existence of a friendship or an acquaintance. And so what we do to sort of look for homophily is we say is within this graph are there two cliques? Are there like a group, two groups of people and within those two groups of people are, are they much more connected within the group than across the group? So it's can you split them into you know, people who like snow and people who like the beach. Is there, and do the people who like the beach all sort of cluster together and the people who like the snow, do they cluster together? So the key thing to homophily is first we have to choose some kind of a partition and then measure whether that's really a partition. So first thing we've got to do is divide the group into half, one, two sets. And then we basically draw a line like this, that basically says if we were to divide this set by breaking these links into the this group on the left the left side and the group on the right side, if, if this was the line that we used to do this division, is that this this set of groups, does this feel like two different clicks? Are they more tightly connected within than across? Okay? So to, to measure homophily, we must propose a partition. We can't just say, is there homophily? We have to kind of find a partition. Maybe we have a hypothesis. Maybe there are people that like snow and like beaches, and we just want to figure that out. So we say, well, well, if we split these into snow and beach people, are there more friends you know, among the snow people and among the beach people than between snow people and beach people? Just as an example. Okay. So we have to guess a partition, and we might because we know something about these people. And then what we do is we start doing some counting. We count the number of left nodes, that's six. We count the number of right nodes, that's three. And then we count the number of, total number of edges, which is 18, and the cross group edges, the edges that cross our little border that we artificially laid into this. And then what we're going to do, the key essence here, is we're going to ask the question, we're going to say this particular network, as it's drawn, if this were just a random network, and, and, these, and the, we just threw these edges onto this network randomly, how would, how, would that network, how would a random network form? And is this particular network look like a random network roughly, or does it look decidedly non-random? So we're really looking for sort of deviation from sort of a random network where whatever it is, whether these are snow people and these are beach people over here, you know, if we split them, does the split seem to have some meaning? So before, oh, that looks kind of scary. Before we sort of do that or to derive the calculation, I could just tell you what the calculation is, but it's actually pretty easy to understand why this calculation works with the way it does. And it comes down to the notion of uh, random link construction. Okay, random link construction is you take all the links away. If you recall, we put 18, there's 18 links total. <clears throat> and we're just going to like throw a dart, you know, at one of these nodes. We still maintain the colors. We're going to throw a dart at one node. Then we're going to throw a dart at another node. And then we're going to form a link. We're going to throw a dart randomly at a start node and randomly at an end node and that's where we're going to draw a link. And then we're going to look at, you know, what is the likelihood of various kinds of links. 
So if we look at the likelihood that the first dart throw ends up in, a left, in the left-hand side, it's the right-hand side, the, the likelihood that the first dart throw is on the left-hand side is two-thirds because there's like six over here and three over there. So the likelihood of just randomly throwing a dart and hitting one of these is two-thirds. And the likely, so, you know, we've picked one. Now the likelihood that the second dart we throw also hits a purple one is also two-thirds. So the likelihood that we're going to form a link, a purple to purple link, is two-thirds times two-thirds or four-ninths. So the likelihood that we're going to form a link that's between these is four-ninths. The likelihood that we are going to throw a, our first dart on this side and the second dart on that side is two-thirds first on the left and one-third on the right. Multiplying that together, the probability of a link that forms like this is two-ninths. So that link forms two-ninths. The probability of a link that's in the right-hand side or the Q set, well, that's one-third to hit one of these and the second one will hit one-third. So the combination is one-ninth. So the likelihood, ooh, we're running out of places to draw on here. The likelihood of that link forming is one ninth. And then similarly, I guess I just have to start over. The probability that we threw our first dart and hit on this side, and then we threw the second dart and hit on that side, forming a link somehow between the sets is one third times two thirds or two ninths, which is the likelihood that that link is getting formed. So here, that's the likelihood of this link. That's the likelihood of that link, and this is the likelihood of that link. And so effectively, and it's always good, it's always good when you add up your probabilities that this, these four numbers add up to one. That's nice. And not that this matters at all, but if you look at this, and P and Q are the sort of these probabilities, the P plus Q squared, which P plus Q should be one, right, ends up being p squared plus 2pq plus q squared. And if you look at these numbers here, well, this 4 ninths is p squared, so that's this. This 1 ninth is q squared, because that's q times q. And then 2pq is that number plus that number. And again, I'm kind of making it too messy. 2pq ends up being this number. There's two of them. So that's what 2pq is, right? So you have your p squared, your q squared, and then 2pq. And so what happens is the total number of cross group edges is, in this case, 2 ninths pl plus 2 ninths, or 4 ninths, or 2pq, whatever p is and whatever q is. And so this turns out to be the probability of either a cross group edge going in either direction. These aren't really directional links. It just has to do with where we threw the, the, um, our, our dart and where it hit first and where it hit second. And so the probability is the likelihood of this kind of a link plus the likelihood of that link, which turned out to be 2pq, and p is the probability that it's in the left set, q is the probability that it's in the right set. And so this is the closed form. So that's the formula. So I'm just, it's really, it turns out that the number of links or the probability of a link forming between a set where two-thirds are in one side and one-third are in the other side is two times two-thirds times one-third, which is <clears throat> four-ninths. So four-ninths. Okay, so but this is just sort of the derivation of the, of the closed, the nice closed form. And now we can sort of skip all that and we sort of can generate the mathematical rule for when we detect homophily. And so if we basically say, okay, here's our P, which is our probability of being in the right side. Here's our Q, which is the probability of being on the left side. When the fraction of actual cross group links in the real graph that we see is significantly less than 2PQ, then there's evidence of homophily. So that previous slide was just to show you sort of what's going on inside of this. And so, so Q is 6 ninths, P is 3 ninths in this case, and 2PQ is 4 ninths, which is 0 0.44, okay? So on average, if you just threw 18 links at this, 18 connections, 
44% of them should go across, okay? And so if we look, the actual number of edges that go across is one, two, three, four, five, and the total number of edges is 18. And so that means that 27% 27, 27 of the edges, of the 18 edges, cross. And so you compare this and you say, whoa, 27 is significantly less than 44%. So that suggests that somehow, however we figured out how to split this group into two pieces, whatever this is, maybe this is beach people and this is snow people, or we could call these the left people and the right people, they are sort of more densely connected among themselves than they are between the groups. So that says that something is holding these people together and bringing. And of course, this graph is tiny, so it hardly matters. But I mean, it's, you know, it's not, you're trying to do this on a much larger graph in reality, but the calculation ends up being the same. Now, so it's, the calculation is very simple. Calculate, you know, choose your split, calculate your P, calculate your Q, calculate your 2PQ, then figure out the number of edges that cross your little split and then compare the two. And if it's less, then you've got homophily. So this means, yes, homophily. Yes, we've well, got it. Now, so you got it. Now what? Well, that's an important thing. So the last thing I want to tell you is that we can compute it, right? If we have, we split our network in half, we can ask, does this compare to a randomly formed graph? And the conclusion might be, well, that partition we picked looks random, there's no homophily, at least what you just picked. There might be another one, but we, the one we picked does not demonstrate homophily. Or we can say, wow, we partitioned this, and it's very different from a random network, and shows evidence of homophily. And that'd be what, like, whoa, we've got it, we found it. So the number says you found it. But it, the key thing to, to emphasize is it, it doesn't understand explain exactly why homophily exists. It's only part of the analysis. And given that you're kind of doing this analysis based on most likely some kind of hypothesis like beach versus snow or something. And you know, you say, okay, I, I did my split based on beach versus snow and look at all the friendships and that does show homophily, then maybe some, there is something to this beach versus snow thing. So, so thank you for uh, listening to my uh, little tiny lecture on uh, computing homophily.